Okay, so good morning again. Uh, my name is Gifty Kwashi. I am with the Maryland Center for School Safety and I am the Fiscal and Grants Manager. So I'm responsible for all five grants that MCSS administers. Uh, this particular grant was passed over to us from the Maryland State Department of Education um, this fiscal year. And so as many of you know, um, you've never had to apply for this grant with Maryland Center for School Safety. It was always through the department. And so this year we had the honor <laughs> of taking over this grant. Now, this is a two-part grant. There's one for just non-public schools, and then there's one for public schools. So that's completely separate. But for the one for non-public schools um, is the one you've applied for. And uh, you're on this call because I wanted to be able to provide you the opportunity to you know, ask me any questions that you have regarding the incomplete um, application submission. But before we get to that, um, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit. And if I'm looking to the right of my screen, I have another screen there that has the presentation on it. So, but I, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the uh, Maryland Center for School Safety. Um, so Maryland Center for School Safety is an independent agency under the Department of Education. We were established in 2013. Um, MCSS, as we're affectionately known, uh, we provide grants um, and you know training and support to public schools, non-public schools, non-public special ed edu education schools, and private schools throughout the state of Maryland. Um, one of the main um, resources that we have is the Safe Schools Maryland Anonymous Reporting System. It's you know. Well, you can call it a tip line, but it's it's an, a resource that we have for both students and, you know, the entire community, staff members at school, parents, um, in fact, the general public to be able to report any incidents of concern um, related to school safety. Um, it is completely anonymous. It's completely free. So if your schools, for example, um, don't maybe already know about this and you want to uh, get more information about it, please feel free to send me an email. I have my contact information at the end of the presentation, so you will have that. But I, I definitely recommend it. We get all kinds of tips in, and some of those tips help us to come up with new training. Um, it also helps us, you know, work on the different things and trends that we are seeing in the schools, and we're able to pass on those information to you all, which help you make uh, better decisions in terms of, you know, your overall school safety and, of course, the safety of, of your students and your staff. So that's a tremendous resource that we offer. It's on our website. Um, you can definitely read more about it. And just in terms of everything NCSS, I recommend you visit our website, uh, safe school, schoolsafety.maryland.gov, schoolsafety.maryland.gov. And um, you can find all information about our training, the grants that we offer. As a matter of fact, um, this grant, the Non-Public Safety Security Improvement Grant, is one of two grants that we offer that non-public schools can apply for. We also offer the um, hate crimes grant. Um, we usually roll out the notification of funding availability sometime in May or June. Um, I do see based on all of the applications that I've received so far that there are some schools who have applied for this grant who, um, you know, they've never applied for the hate crimes grant. Now, of course, with the hate crimes grant, your school has to be determined to be at risk of a hate crime incident or an attack. So that's one of the main eligibility criteria. But I recommend, you know, when that time comes, just check out the NOFA and see if your school qualifies and, you know, you can submit an application for that as well. We've already closed out the application for this year, but it will be available in fiscal year 23. All right, so that's it about uh, MCSS, the main reason why we're here. So the MCSS administered NPSI grant, the Non-Public School Safety Security Improvement Grant, 
is slightly different from what you've been used to in the past. Um, you know, prior in terms of how your applications were submitted with the department, you apply for the textbook grant program, you apply for the aging pro uh, school aging program, and then you apply for the NPSI. Now, what you've had to do is you apply for, you know, the textbook and technology grant program, um, probably the aging grant program, and then you have to completely leave the M MSDE site and then come on to the MCSS site just to apply for the NPSI grant. One of the things that has been different that I have come to acknowledge in terms of all of the applications that I'm, I'm seeing is that one of the standard requirements of the MCSS grants that we administer is to provide us a statement of need narrative, you know, and a detailed project description. We want to have an idea about what the need is, you know, what what your school is about, where you have identified, you know, school safety concerns that you want to be able to address. And that only comes from the description that you provide. Um, I understand based on prior submissions that it's usually, you know, maybe a one line item about what the project is about. But we want to have a, a good understanding of, you know, what the need is. What is this project that you, you need completed? Why do you need to complete this project? And how does it, you know, impact the safety of your students? What, what are the outcomes that you're looking for? So that is essentially one of the requirements of, you know, the NPSI grant and all of the grants that MCSS administers. So currently, as you know, we are receiving applications on, on schoolsafety.maryland.gov. Um, the application deadline is this Friday, so they are coming in fast and furious. And the funding itself is provided through the state of Maryland. I've gotten questions about whether this is like a, a federal grant. No, it's not. It's provided by the state of Maryland. It is a capital improvement grant. So there are certain things that you can't use it for. And I've gotten a lot of questions about, you know, uh, whether this project is eligible or whether that project is elig eligible. So as you all know, because you've all already submitted applications, um, in order to be eligible, like I said before, you must have had to apply for the textbook grant program um, or your school must be a, an MSD designated special ed school um, in order to be able to, to be eligible to apply. Um, the minimum eligibility amount is $5,000. I have gotten questions about, well, you know, the uh, project that we need to complete is less than $5,000, but we have multiple locations. Can we just combine all of them on the project request form to meet that minimum? Yes. And the good thing about that is you only have to submit one grant application. You don't have to submit multiple for each individual school. And so the allocation formula, as I'm sure most of you know, is $65 per, per enrolled student and $85 if at least 20% of your students are enrolled in the free um, or reduced meal program, federal program, or that your school is an MSD designated special education school. So if if you meet any of the latter eligibility requirements, then you get $85 per student that is enrolled. And otherwise, you get $65 uh, per the number of students you have enrolled in the 2020-2021 school year. So the enrollment data is always based on the prior school year because that's more of a complete uh, picture of what happened in, in during that school year. And that's why it's based on that. So the application requirements, like I spoke about, for this particular grant, the requirements are a project request form. And that's a hyperlink because that is a templated form that we currently have on our website. You also need the project timeline form. It's also a templated uh, form that is currently available on our website. Now, statement of need narrative and the detailed project description, like I talked about before, has to come from you. There are no templates for that. And so this call particularly is, you know, um, being provided because I've gotten so many questions about, well, so are there templates for 
uh, the statement of need narrative or is there a template for the project description? And I just wanted to, you know, give you the opportunity, hopefully if you have questions specific to your program or your project, you, you can definitely ask it here. You can send me an email later. But um, we have this call because these are still items that we have outstanding for the applications that we've received. We've gotten applica applications where there's nothing attached, right? So there's no copy of the W-9, uh, there's no project request form, there's nothing. And so it makes it uh, very challenging on our end to be able to review that grant. Uh, but not only that, you know, it gives us no information about what this project is about. I have gotten applications where it's just the estimate from the vendor that was included. That is not sufficient information because, again, it does not tell me anything about the need and the expected outcome. So the emphasis for, for this particular call is on the statement of need narrative. Now, let me see if I can share this with you. Many of you would have um, received notification about um, an incomplete grant application. And so when you receive that notification, it normally talks about, you know, or it, at least it highlights what was received. So it says everything else not you know, that does not have a check mark is basically outstanding. So out of these five things, the project request form, the project timeline, your statement of need narrative and a detailed project description, which can be, you know, one document um, and a copy of the W-9. So if, for example, you submitted a project request form and a project timeline form, those two items would be highlighted. The other three will not be highlighted because they were not included with the grant application. And so when you receive that email, it's not saying you were not approved. I've gotten emails where people say, you denied my application. You know, you said this was missing and you completely denied the application. It's not a denial. Um, it is just to inform you that there are certain requirements that are uh, part of applying for this grant that were not included and we're just sending you notification to uh, send it in as soon as possible. Again, this year we realized that with the, this being the first time MCSS is, is administering this grant and our applicants, you know, have not been used to providing some of these um, information in the past, it's posed, you know, some challenge, but I can, um, at least from my perspective, I can assure you that we're not looking for, you know, two, three, four pages of information. If you have that, wonderful. We will read through it and, and review it accordingly. But we're really just asking for maybe a paragraph here, a paragraph there, um, just, you know, telling us enough detail about what the project is about. Um, one of the things that we require as part of the grant monitoring process is a quarterly progress report. And so that progress report, when you submit it, gives us the ability to go back to the detail that you provided when you applied. And we can compare things and see if this grant is on course or if a realignment is needed. You know, maybe you started with one project and now you see that there's a need somewhere else and you want to reallocate your funds to that. You can do that. But the only place of reference for us, um, you know, is to go back to the initial application documents, which, of course, includes your statement of need narrative and, and the project description. So, again, when you get that notification of an incomplete application, um, basically, an application is considered incomplete if one or more of the above items are not included, um, which is one of the main issues that we've, uh, challenges that we've faced, which is why we felt the need to put together uh, this technical assistance call so that we can um, help you through any questions that you might have. Again, the first two items are templated, so it is available on the MCSS website. Um, let me see. I'm not sure if you're able to see my screen, uh, but this is the. Uh, please let me know if you're able to see my screen before um, I I move I move on. Are you able to see my screen? Okay. Yes. 
Okay, thank you. So this is the um, MCSS website. And, you know, the first thing that you see is the NOFA itself, the notification of funding availability. So that's yes, usually, you, I'm sorry. No, we can see the PowerPoint. We can oh, you, see. okay. Let me get out of that and then um, let's see. Uh, just bear with me. I am going to stop sharing for a second so I can pull up the right screen. All right. Gifty, you're muted. There you go. Thank you so much. <laughs> you probably see yourselves. All right. So can you see the uh, website? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. So this is our website. Many of you have already gone here and submitted the application, but um, one of the main document that hopefully you've all had a chance to review prior to submitting the application is the notification of funding document, right? And so that has all of the um, application detail that we believe is important for you to know to be able to um, apply. Now, does he have everything? Probably not. You know, we always go back um, to lessons learned, all the questions that we received to try to make the next one more succinct and direct, right? So that hopefully it answers all of your questions ahead of time. Uh, but one of the um, the main part of, of the NOFA, which we put at number five, but again, lessons learned, maybe um, it would be better to put this up front the next time, make it number one, um, are all of the application requirements. So essentially A through E are similar to what I showed on the PowerPoint, which is the statement of need narrative. You know, if you have an estimate already from the vendor, of course you can provide all of those details, as well as include a copy of the estimate if you have it. Um, and then the project request form, the timeline, and the uh, form W-9. If you don't already have that, we provided the hyperlink so you can fill it out, have it signed, and you know, include it with um, your, your application submission. And so, you know, if we don't receive any item between A and E, which are requirements, the rest are also important, but they're optional. But if we don't receive any items in that list, that's when you probably hear back from me through Smartsheet about um, the incomplete applications. I also wanted to share with you, let me see if I have it, um, just, you know, a, um, a sample of uh, let me make sure it's right here. A sample of um, a statement, there you go, uh, a narrative that we got from one of the um, one of the schools that that applied. This is, you know, again, can you see my screen? Let me there you go. All right, so this is really, a one page document that they submitted, right? And it just talked a little bit about their school um, and you know the number of students that they have, just a little bit of history about their school and some of the challenges that they're facing, which is why they're requesting funding uh, from the grant program to you know take care of those challenges and improve the overall safety of their school. So this is essentially you know all that we're asking for. Um, I know that folks have um, mentioned that in the project request form that they put a project description. And yes, I've seen that. It's usually, you know, a line or two, but that is not sufficient. And the project request form is not to replace, <clears throat> excuse me, a detailed project description. And so that's why, you know, it doesn't allow for, you know, a lot of um, information to be put in that one line. But um, the fact that you have this here, again, does not mean no uh, detailed project description is required. This is just to give us, you know, an overview of, you know, the type of project you're pursuing, um, you know, just very small detail about, you know, the actual project, when you expect to start, when you expect to end, the amount that you're requesting, and of course, if you have other fund sources. And then if you look at the uh, project timeline, let me see if I have that opened. Um, let's see. 
what is this? All right, so this is a project timeline. If you look at the project timeline, it's you know a little bit different, but um, it basically asks about the same um, information to some extent. Let me. Um, but here, it really just you know it's about the grant activity. So this is a grant that you know is essentially. Um, open up until what may 2024 which is when final uh, reimbursement requests are due and so you know you have the option under grant activities and i got this question from one of the applications or applicants and i thought it was a very valid question which of course has gone into lessons learned for less you know, next year is that when you fill out this form you know, because I know this is something that some of you will have to provide as part of the uh, missing documents that were not um, submitted. But when you fill out this form, you know, and you're indicating that a project will be completed in the first quarter, well, first quarter of which fiscal year, right? Yes, we said the fiscal years through 2020 through 2022 through 2024, but you know, there's no selection here. If you do first quarter, is it really first quarter of 2023 or 2024? So that's something we could have done better on. So the way we are um, requesting that you fill this out now is that under grant activities, you know, just say, you know, I, I um, expect to put out a bid um, requesting different quotes for the project. And I expect to do this in fiscal year year 2022. Now, what's the fiscal year for the state of Maryland? July 1 through June 30th of every year. So, you know, you just based on your your expectation, you can say, you know, fiscal year 22, 23, or 24. So if you have that detail in the grant activities, then if you check first quarter, we know you mean first quarter of, you know, 2023, we already passed uh, first quarter of 2022, but that gives us an idea of what the, you know, what you expect um, as a project um, manager. And so the very last column here, key persons responsible. So example, the project manager, the contractor, head of organization, we just need to know. So as we get, um, the quarterly progress reports, and if it's somebody completely, um, you know, different from what was initially um, announced or stated in this form, it gives us an idea. Does that mean, you know, you can't designate someone else in your organization to complete the task? No, it just means that if we ever have to make reference to well, we received this report, it said this, but it's different from what was provided. Can you confirm if this detail is accurate or not? That is essentially part of you know, monitoring or do, uh, ensuring that the grant is performing the way um, you intended for it to be. And also, you know, um, if there are any questions that need to be addressed, then it can be addressed as well. So with that, uh, let me just share my... Um, contact information with you, which I'm sure most of you already have. Um, and, you know, just let me know if you have any questions that I, I guess I haven't answered already, and I will be more than happy to answer it. All right, so let me see the chat. Uh, so yes, if you are missing, uh, the question is, do we resubmit all of the documents? Um, I would only recommend you submit what is missing, right? So if you go back to your uh, notification email, the complete application notification email, and it said your W-9 is, is, is missing, meaning the W-9 box is not checked, then that's all you have to submit, just, you know, um, send it to me via email directly. Or if you look at the notification email that you received, it said to send it to mcss.mcss at maryland.gov. It's also on the screen. So just send that in. Um, I've had situations where folks have, you know, requested access to the smart sheet so they can upload the information that was missing. Um, unfortunately, we cannot grant access to the smart sheet. And so this is just an MCSS, um, you know, staff uh, type of sheet that we're using to monitor the grant and, and all of the applications that we're receiving. So as an organization, you may have smart sheet on your end too and have an account, but 
we're not able to share our sheet with you. So we always, as soon as I get those requests, um, I send out an email uh, right away to the requester and just let them know we cannot share screen, but they can feel free to send the information to me directly. Now, folks have gone in and resubmitted an entirely new application. And of course, I reach out to say, did you mean to submit a new one? Um, do you want me to use this new one? And, and basically, you know, not consider the first one that was submitted, you know, because it just, we want to make sure we're all on the same page. So you don't have to submit a completely new application. You don't have to resubmit everything else that you included with the first application. Just submit what was not included or what was deemed to be incomplete. All right, so let me see. Um, I see Miss Christine, you have your hand raised, so please um, go ahead and then I'll get to the... Um, yep, the I, I just, I actually put it in the chat. I, I actually have two questions oh, though. There you go. Um, one is, I, I think I have submitted everything. Yeah, I, mean, I think my narrative was not as complete as it could be. Should I resubmit that to be a better narrative? I would love it if you could do that. <laughs> I could totally do that. Not a problem at all. And the second question is the um, the allocation of sixty five dollars per student. Is that the maximum amount of the grant? Yes. Okay. So that that is stipulated in the actual uh, bill language or or you know the statute for for this particular grant. So the maximum allowable amount. Um, if you are not a special ed designated school or have at least 20% of your students uh, participating in the farms program is $65 uh, per student. So I guess my next question is if my grant was, if my grant request was greater than that, can I, should I resubmit a, a, an entirely new grant knowing that now? No, you don't have to submit it. Um, I wouldn't be doing my job if, you know, <laughs> I didn't go back to what the formula said. So you don't have to resubmit it. The good thing with this grant, of course, you know, all of the state funded grants is dependent on, you know, the budget actually being passed, right? So, but the good thing with this grant and many of the state issue grants is that, you know, especially if it's a big project, you can always um, continue the project based on funding availability for, you know, future years. Very and good. so if, you know, you don't get enough funding this year for this particular project, you know, you can, you can do a continuation uh, come next year uh, for, you know, the same project, of course, or if you want to do something completely different, you're still able to apply. And so one of that actually brings up a, a good point that I, I want to make, which is that, this is a, a grant that goes, you know, for multiple years. So we give out this award. This is this funding is available for fiscal year 22, but the performance period of the grant is through fiscal year 24. Now, come next fiscal year, provided you know budgets are approved, there's a new pot of money, right? Which supposedly will go through 23, go from 23 through 25. So it's important for you all to, you know, create that delineation between your funding so that there is no overlap or, you know, like you, you maybe mix up the funds. I know you guys are all pro, you get different uh, grant sources that you manage. So it's important to, you know, make sure that there's separation in terms of, well, was this a fiscal year 22 grant or, you know, was this a fiscal year 23 grant? So um, knowing that it's very likely NCSS will continue administering this grant, um, it's important to just keep that at the back of your mind. And I see Ms. Denise has her hands raised. Yes, thank you so much for this information. Um, this is totally different from the prior years. So I'm asked, so the question I want to ask is I received an uh, email saying that my application was incomplete and I understand why, but it did not tell me what was incomplete. It just said your application is incomplete and there will be a, a meeting today. And right. that's what we're on. So it, didn't, it did not tell me, it didn't outline anything. Right. So you probably missed the first one. Uh, the meeting one is the one that I finally sent out to 
um, just, you know, do a catch all and, and answer all the questions. But the actual initial notification is it, it, it comes from Smartsheet. Of course, my email is sort of put in parentheses in case you need to reach me when you get the message. But it is an auto generated message, which I believe began going out December 15th. So maybe that's how far back you have to go to catch the original um, email that went out. But the one for the meeting was my final attempt to, again, bring all of us together so we can address your questions. But what we can do, if you don't mind, is uh, just send me an email so that I can go back to your actual um, application and let you know exactly what is outstanding, what we're missing, and, okay. and have you send it later. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And let me see. I see. Um, yes. Uh, Miss. OK, so Taran Patel, I, I can assume if it's a lady or. Uh, but so you said so anything in yellow is missing. Um, anything that is not that does not have a check mark next to it. So I'm guessing the one in yellow is not missing. It's actually the one that we we received. But anything that does not have a check mark from the smart sheet notification um, that you received is what is missing. And uh, Miss Murphy, on the information you sent, it did say to send the ID number. Is that at the bottom of the form? Right. So the ID number is part of the notification itself that you would have received. So it said when you're sending your documentation, reference your application ID and it um, I think the sequence is FY 2022 dash, you know, a certain number. Um, so it's NPSI FY 2022 and then a certain number. So that is your um, application ID. If you don't have it, that's fine. As long as I have your organization name, I will make sure to attach the document to the right grant. So just put your organization name and that will still be sufficient uh, for me. Let's see. All right, you're welcome. Um, any other questions that I can answer? Again, you know, my email has been <laughs> coming in fast and furious, but I'm always happy to answer um, any of your questions because if you understand what is required from you, it makes it easier on my end in terms of the review. So uh, one thing that I didn't mention when I talked about NCSS is we are a huge agency with a total staff of 14. <laughs> so there's really just, you know, one person assigned for a lot of the different units. And so the fact that we're growing and, you know, the uh, citizens are seeing that we're doing a good job with our grants, because again, we used to only manage what, three, and then it became four, and then it's now five. So, uh, but it's still just 14 of us. So um, we always try to make sure that we are providing our uh, grant applicants and even just the entire citizens that we help out to, uh, make sure that we give you, you know, all of the information that you need. So if it's something that we need back from you, we want to provide you as much information about the process to make it easier on your end. And so if you email me, I'm, you know, I'm usually pretty fast at responding, but if it takes a little bit longer time, it's probably because I'm, you know, um, handling something else, but just bear with me, um, which is why the best way would be to use the mcss.mcss at maryland.gov because we have multiple uh, staff members looking at that at the same time. So at least if I'm tidying something else, someone else can respond to you um, as well. Any further questions for me? Okay, so um, again, I'm available via email. Just you know, reach out to me. Of course, that is my cell phone. So many of us are teleworking, um, and so if you call the main office line, it's not currently being monitored, but you can um, get to me directly four four three nine zero two zero nine nine two, and um, you know, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions that maybe come up after after this call. And if you have no further um, questions, thank you so much. Um, I know that next year is going to be easier because now we know, you know, what the expectation is. So hopefully it will be much easier. And again, 
lessons learned will be applied to make the process more succinct for you all. Thank you all so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. You take care. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.